Hello all my fellow gamers and internet nerds, welcome to another one of my videos and today we are looking at Gaming News Monthly October Edition Spooky Season. Hello and sorry for the interruption from Future Chris. I am aware that this video was in fact not uploaded during Spooky Season due to a delay on my part and it is now in fact Festive Season. So enjoy the video and Merry Christmas! Uh, I've tried to spook myself up, effectively amounts to doing my hair in a bit of a weird way and using black eyeliner and nail varnish, but it's the best I could do on short notice, and by short notice I mean I've known it's coming all year, we all know when Halloween is. Um, <laughs> so, in my gaming monthlies, I like to try and really get to the root of a problem. You may be able to tell I struggle a bit getting to roots sometimes, so we'll see how well I do on this one, but I like my chances. <laughs> First up is an update on uh, effectively just a running stream of things I've been talking about for the last few months is the Activision Blizzard scandal. It's still going. They're both, you know, Activision Blizzard are throwing lawsuits at the state of California. California is sending lawsuits back. It honestly hasn't really moved on other than uh, a dozen or two dozen or so employees have, high level employees, have actually been dismissed and sacked from Activision Blizzard. Like, will it change anything? Honestly, probably not. I don't think when the corporate culture is so embedded like that. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see where that goes, to be honest. It's, it's still a dreadful situation, and I feel deeply sorry for all of the low-level employees that are still involved and being caught in the crossfire of this one. Okay, so as a follow-on from this, from the uh, Activision Blizzard story, is actually the character of McCree in Overwatch, who Blizzard have, have officially announced he's going to be renamed. They finally announced that his name will be changed to... Cole Cassidy. Now the reasons for this, if you somehow don't know, is because the character was actually named after the Diablo 4 lead designer Jesse McCree, quite a high ranking bloke within Blizzard Entertainment. He has been dismissed now due to his uh, infamous involvement with the Cosby Suite. If you're not sure what the Cosby Suite is, I will put a link into the corner now for a video I did in July that I dedicated entirely to the Blizzard scandal, and I mention it more in depth there. Uh, check that out at your own discretion. I do give you a trigger warning, though. Go view that video if you want more information. But all you need to know for this story is the dude has been dismissed because he was a pretty horrible guy. So, Blizzard have said in a statement that they built Overwatch around the concept of inclusivity and equality. So that makes what Jesse McCree did and what he stands for the antithesis of what they believe Overwatch stands for and the themes running through it. Their statement followed, as we continue to discuss how we best live up to our values and to demonstrate our commitment to creating a game world that reflects them, we believe it is necessary to change the name of the hero, currently known as McCree, to something that better represents what Overwatch stands for. What's my take on this? Good. This McCree character, the real life character, sounds horrible. He genuinely sounds like a predator and I think it is a good thing that they, they, they are not honouring him by naming a character after him. And to anyone who is angry about this or thinks that this is unacceptable, I'll give you this. It's just a name. I don't care whether you're really into it, whether you're a McCree, McCree main. It doesn't matter. It, it, you shouldn't be honouring predators and horrible people like this. It's just not acceptable. So that's my take on this. I believe that this is a good thing. I believe that it's good that this Jesse McCree character has been dismissed from Blizzard so that he hopefully can't hurt anyone else. That's my take. I'm happy about it. To anyone who isn't, frankly, shut up. Let's move on from there. <laughs> Okay, on to our next story, and uh, last week the streamer Valkyrie, who I'm pretty sure most of you will have heard of, as uh, she has 3.5 million subscribers on YouTube, released a skincare line called Reflect. Um, you know what, this honestly doesn't surprise me, a lot of influencers, streamers, YouTubers, whatnot, do skincare lines, they're fairly easy to make, and they're very popular, so I get it. So this skincare line is called Reflect, and the main gimmick behind it is that it will, it has ingredients apparently, that will protect you from blue light. So that's the idea, it's like it's directly aimed at you, the gamer. I assume you're a gamer if you're watching my videos, if, if you're not, thank you for being here, I really appreciate it, but uh, I'm not sure why. So the main reason for the backlash was because there actually isn't much research into blue light affecting skin. Now we all know it can affect your eyes and your circadian rhythm and your sleep, but specifically your skin, well, a lot of people were arguing that you would need hours and hours and hours or even days of exposure to a screen, or even a really big monitor, before you'd get the same amount from 15 minutes from the sunshine coming in my windows right now. That's where the backlash begun. There were a lot of people 
claiming that this was a scam, particularly because Valkyrie's viewers tend to be quite young, so they were claiming this was misleading. So my take on this one, I honestly just feel sorry for Valkyrie. She was misled, I believe, on this. Um, she's not a chemist. She's not, you know, a, a doctor or a PhD or anything like that. If you watch her video response to this on YouTube, she was shown studies that proved that this was a thing that worked, um, and I think she was misled by the company making it. When you put your name on something, you become the target of, of any backlash to it. Unfortunately, as a skincare product and line, it, it's been a bit of a failure. Speaking of failures, when I was young, everyone said I would be super successful in life, but uh, look at me now. My mum's really proud of me. Also, hi mum, thanks for watching. Uh, also, my mum's born on Halloween, so uh, happy belated birthday. Yeah, that's the story. That's my take on it. I feel a bit sorry for her, but I do believe that she was maybe misled a little bit. And I honestly, all round, I just think it's quite amusing that there's a skincare line for gamers. Another small interruption from Future Chris. Since making this video and editing it, the Reflect brand has in fact now gone. They've withdrawn it from sale and it is no longer available. So this entire segment was null and void. I apologize for wasting your time and will now allow you to return to your video. <laughs> And now for a sombre story. A sad story, if I'm honest with you. All of the Halo games on the Xbox 360 are having their online servers shut down. That's it. The end of an era, man. You know, Halo cut its teeth on the original Xbox uh, before moving on to the Xbox 360 for some of the later games. Now, of course, companies shutting down their servers for older games is nothing new. EA is especially responsible for this. I mean, Titanfall and Titanfall 2, despite having dedicated, sizable communities, barely got any online support. At least the servers are still running on that one. It's honestly amazing that they've even been going on this long. Personally, I didn't even know they were still running, so I think that's quite impressive that they're even here. Very nostalgic for those days of gaming, the early days of online play. Uh, my first major online experience, I think like for most people, was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Halo was iconic. It did redefine the FPS genre, and I think it is kind of sad. It's a bit of an end of an era, but 343 Studios are actually working on Halo Infinite, which is due for release relatively shortly. So, so yeah, that's a short, quick story there for you, but, but I understand why they have to go. That's it from me on that one. Let's move on to our next story. <laughs> From somber to exciting, an announcement from Rockstar that there's a new game. Wasn't GTA 6 though. Um, as we wait for them to make GTA 6, I would like to give you now a visual representation of every gamer's frustration with the wait for GTA 6. <laughs> Thank you. Now on to the main story. It's not GTA 6. It's not even the GTA 5 re 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 release at this point. I mean, how many consoles has it been on now? Like three platforms. <laughs> No, it is in fact GTA, the Trilogy Definitive Edition. It is a HD remaster of all the PS2 era games. So you've got in there GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. So now you can catch up to that train in glorious HD. Genuinely for once, this is... This. I'm making fun of Rockstar here, but I'm actually very excited about this. Uh, my best friend immediately after the release sent me the video and was like, Dude, I think we're both quite excited about this. Um, sometimes with games like this, he'll buy the game and then stream it to me and I'll just watch, or I'll buy it and then stream it. But I honestly think with this one, we're probably both going to be getting it. I'm very excited for it. Very, very excited. Particularly Vice City. Vice City was always my favourite. That Miami 80s vibe. Mm, I loved it. Honestly, I'm actually glad that this is a remaster, not a remake. I feel like a full remake of these games would be... Too much. It would take too many resources away that could be dedicated to a new Red Dead Redemption game, although we've only just had one, so that's pretty much far off in the future. Or, yeah, let's say GTA 6. But a remaster, beautiful. And it looks amazing. I will put some footage on screen now of the difference between them, and you can see it is stark. It is night and day. But there's not much more to say about it. It looks great. I'm very excited. I might even make some videos on it uh, when I get it, or even stream some of it, to be honest. It will be interesting to see the contrast, though, between the gameplay and the modern games, because when you do remasters of old games like this, sometimes you can find that it doesn't match up to what you remember, because a lot of the mechanics are actually super old school and just don't gel very well. It can be a bit clunky, I find, with some of these old remasters. 
And of course, some of these old remasters, I'm looking at you, the Silent Hill collection, are very clearly rushed jobs. I don't think this is a rushed job. Rockstar very rarely put out a rushed job. They are almost universally great games, so I think it will be a nice little stopgap on the way to GTA 6. This is going to be good, I reckon. I think that's where I'll end today's show, though. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it if you've got this far. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe even a little informative. I mean, I make these videos mostly to express my opinion, not to give information, so uh, hopefully you found it amusing, though. If you've managed to get this far and found this video entertaining, please do give it a like. It really does help with the algorithm, and personally, I would just appreciate it so much. If you've really enjoyed it and you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button underneath. I will be eternally grateful to you for that. If you want to watch more of my content right now, there will be videos appearing on screen now here. The one on this side will be the last video I made, and the one on this side is a YouTube suggestion that they think you'll enjoy of my collection. And again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. You stay safe out there. Goodbye.